Hi Bobcats, it's Miss Lee, and today we're going to talk about relative frequency. Categorical data are data that are sorted into categories, what you would see on a bar graph or a histogram. This data describes qualitative characteristics such as eye color, favorite type of music or snack, etc. Look down at the examples. You'll see a histogram and it's talking about the ages of people who chose M&M as their favorite candy. This particular one on the right is a bar graph talking about the number of people and their favorite fruits. The relative frequency of a category is the ratio of its frequency to the sum of the frequencies for all categories. And we know with the ratios that we can write it using a colon or the word two, but in this case we want to write it in fraction form. Okay, relative frequency is often written as a fraction or percent and sometimes also in decimal form. For example, if 6 out of 24 orders were for pepperoni pizza, then the relative frequency of pepperoni pizzas is 6 to 24 or 25%. So we're going back to where we have to change into percents. We know percent is out of 100. So we need to somehow change this 24 into 100, which can't be done right this way, but we can simplify. We can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 6, and it's going to give us a 1 to 4 ratio. 4 will then go into 100, use the scale factor of times 25, multiply the 1 by 25 as well, and you get 25 out of 100. Anytime you have a number out of 100, you can write it, that numerator, as the percent, 25 percent. So we're going to be doing a lot of that today. The table shows the results of a survey of students about their favorite summer sport. All right, it tells us the sport and it tells us the frequency. You'll notice the frequency is using tally marks. Okay, most of the time you'll see the frequency written that way. Basketball, five people chose that as their favorite summer sport. Seven people chose baseball, four people swimming, three people soccer, two people track, and four people softball. We want to make a relative, a relative frequency table of this data where we're going to write both the fraction and the percent. Now, a lot of times it'll just ask you for the percent, but you need to write it as a fraction. As long as you can put it in that fraction form, you can easily change it to a percent. So we're going to start with base, ba basketball. We want to write the relative frequency as a ratio of those, the frequency who chose basketball, which is five, to the frequency of all the sports. So that means we're going to have to add all of these up. So here we have five, 10, 12, 12 plus four is 16, plus three is 19, plus two is 21, plus four is 25. So it's five out of 25. Now, to change that to a percent, we just need to change that denominator to 100. And our skill factor, 25 times 4, will give us 100. Multiply 5 times 4, and that gives us 20 out of 100. Now that it's out of 100, we know our percent is 20%. And then we just do the same for each of the sports. Baseball, 7 people out of 25. The cool thing about this is this total is not going to change, so we're going to keep using the same scale factor. We're going to multiply that numerator by 4, and we're going to get 28%. Four people chose swimming, 4 out of 25. Again, the total amount, the whole amount did not change, so we use the same scale factor. We're going to multiply by 4, and it's going to give us 16%. Three people out of 25 chose soccer. Multiply it by four and we get 12%. Two people out of 25 chose track. Multiply it by four and we get 8%. And four people out of 25 chose softball. Multiply it by four and we get 16%. Now you could always check to make sure you got the correct percents by adding them up. Add up all of your percents and the total percent should be 100.
A class of freshman students at Lincoln High School chose their preferred university to attend after graduation. The results of the survey are shown in the table below. So we have the University of Texas. Four students chose this university. Six people chose Texas A&M. Four people chose Baylor. Three chose Texas Tech, one Rice, and two Sam Houston State University. We're going to use this information in the chart to complete this relative frequency table below. Now, looks like in some of them we're going to be looking for the percent, and some of them we're going to be looking for the actual frequency. So the University of Texas, four people chose the University of Texas. So I want to write it in fraction form first. Now it's a ratio of four to the total. Well, we need to figure out the total. So here we go. There's four plus six is 10, plus four is 14, plus three is 17, 18, plus two is 20. So it's four out of 20. What is our scale factor this time? If we want to go into a percent, we need to change the 20 to 100. The scale factor is going to be to multiply it by 5. And when I multiply it by 5, it's going to give me 20 out of 100. Anything out of 100 you can write as a percent, so this is going to be 20 percent. Texas A&M, 30 percent. So this wasn't that good of a table because we can come back over here and we can cheat and see that it's six people. But let's try it a different way, just, just to so you can see how you might have to solve it in the future. Remember our percent proportion, part to whole equals percent out of 100? That's what we're going to use. We know the whole is 20 students, and we know our percent is 30 percent, 30 out of 100. And we're looking, our unknown is this part. We want to know how many out of 20 equals the 30 percent. So we're going to go backwards. Instead of going 20 to 100, we want to change 100 into 20. And we can do that by dividing by 5. So use the same scale factor. And 30 divided by 5 is 6. So 6 students represents 30%. Okay, Baylor, the frequency was 4, which we already have 4 up here, so that's 20%. Didn't have to do any work on that. Let's go over here, 15%. I know we can look at the table and get the frequency, but let's not do that. Let's go ahead and use our percent proportion. I'm going to change the color to green. And it's going to be the unknown part out of a total of 20. And our percent is 15% out of 100. So we haven't changed anything. We're still going from 100 to 20. So we're still using the same scale factor of dividing by 5. And 15 divided by 5 gives us 3. So three students chose Texas Tech. Now let's change 1 into a percent. It's going to be 1 out of 20. Come back up here. Remember, we're going from 20 to 100, so our scale factor is times 5. And 1 times 5 will give us 5%. We have 2 out of 20. We're using the same scale factor, multiplying by 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 out of 100 is 10%. We can then use the data in our frequency, our relative frequency table, to analyze and interpret it. So which university represents the mode for the data shown? And mode means the most. All you have to do is look at the percent. Which one is the highest percent? And that would be the 30%, which is Texas A&M. OK, these are true or false statements. 50% of the students chose either Baylor or Texas A&M. OK, how many students chose Baylor? 20%. And if we add Texas A&M to that, Texas A&M was also 20%, so that's a total of 40%. Was this a true or false statement? Well, they were saying 50%, so this one is definitely false. One-fourth of the students chose to attend the University of Texas. OK, 
Okay, so now we're, th we're talking fractions, right? So one-fourth. Coming over here, University of Texas is 20%. Well, I know that percent's always out of 100, so I can simplify, and let's see if it simplifies to one-fourth. I can, they both end in a zero, so I can do our little shortcut, cross them out. I now have two out of 10, so I'm gonna divide both by two, and it's gonna give me one-fifth. And one-fifth is not equal to one-fourth, so this one is also false. Fewer than 80% of the students did not choose to attend Texas Tech. All right, well first, how many chose to attend Texas Tech? Looking over here, Texas Tech, 15%. So if I subtract that from the 100%, that's going to give me 85%. If 15% chose Texas Tech, then the rest of the percent, which is 85%, chose not to attend. And this one says fewer than 80%. So this one is false as well. Okay, the table below shows the total number of books read by each of the seven sixth grade classes. All right, so these are the classes, first period, second period, third period, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. In first period, 78 books were read. In second period, 90 books were read, and so on. Okay, what state, which statement about the data is true? We're looking for what is true. Statement A says, the data does not have a mode number of books. Well, is there the most? We have 178, we have 190, 155, 182. Oh, here's another 55. Here's another 55. We have 85. Oh, we have three 85s. So this statement is false. It does have a mode. The mode is 55. And we're looking for the true statement. So let's move on to B. The least number of books read was by class one. So class one said read 78 books. Are there any other books less than 78? Yes, the 55, right, the mode. So this one is false. 20% of the books read were by class two. Okay, we need to figure out some percents here. Class two read 90, and I'm gonna do C, the work over here. They read 90 books out of, what's the total number of books read? Well, you're gonna to have to add them up. Okay, so let's add it up. We're gonna add up the ones place first. Eight plus zero is eight, plus five is 13, plus two is 15, plus five is 20, plus five is 25, plus five is 30. So I have a zero in the ones place, I'm gonna carry a three. Three plus seven is 10, plus nine is 19, plus five is 24, plus eight is 32, plus five is 37, plus eight is 45, plus five is 50. So it's a total of 500 books that were read. So this is 90 out of 500. And we're looking for the percent, and percent has to be out of 100. So we need to change this 500 into 100. And we can easily do that by dividing by five. So we have to do the same thing to the 90, divide it by five, and we get 18 out of 100. So the percent is 18% of the books were read by class two, not 20%. So this one is also false. So that must leave D as the correct answer, is this true statement, but we need to check it to make sure. 17% of the books were read by class six. Six. So class six read 85 books. So that's going to be, and this is going to be D, it's going to be 85 out of the total number read, which we've already added them up, is 500. We're looking for the percent, so we know we need to change that 500 into 100, which we're going to divide by 5, do the same thing to the 85, and we get 17 out of 100, which does equal 17%. And that was our true statement. So D was the true statement. The table below shows the number of each color marble in a bag. Which two colors make up 33 and one-third percent of the bag of marbles? 
Okay, so red and blue. We know that there are 10 reds, 23 blues, so that's a total of 33. So is that our answer? Well, we don't know yet because we don't know what percent this is. It's going to be 33 out of how many total? Well, we have to add them all up. Add up your ones digits. 0 plus 5 is 5, plus 3 is 8, plus 5 is 13, plus 2 is 15. Carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 75. So it's 33 out of 75. And I need to somehow change this into 100. And I know I can't do that with a 75, but I believe I can divide by 3. 33 divided by 3 is 11. And if I think of 75 cents and I divide it by 3, I get 3 quarters, right? 25 cents. Okay, this works because now we can change the 25 into 100. Multiply by 4, do the same thing to the 11. We get 44 hundredths, and as a percent, that would be 44%. That is not 33 and one third percent, so A does not work. Okay, so let's go on to answer choice B, green and orange. Well, there are 15 greens, 12 oranges. That is a total of 27. So we're going to have 27 out of 75. Let's go ahead and simplify. I know I can divide by 3 again, and it's going to give me 9 out of 25. If I multiply it by 4, that's going to give me my 100 denominator, and 9 times 4 is 36. So this is 36%. Still not what I'm looking for. So let's move on to the red and the pink. There are 10 reds, 15 pinks. It's a total of 25 out of 75. And, oh, quarters. This, this is easy. This simplifies to 1 third. Ah, we know what 1 third is, don't we? repeating threes. So the percent would be 33 and one third percent. So C is the answer. Okay, this is your independent practice. The table below shows the number of boxes of a dozen donuts sold each day for five days. Which statement is not true based on the data in the table? So it gives you the day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it tells you how many boxes of donuts are sold. 44 boxes of donuts on Monday, 30 on Tuesday, 40 on Wednesday, 36 on Thursday, 50 on Friday. So go ahead and go through. Um, you're looking for the one that is not true, which statement is not true. Good luck.